I'm Laura with Hot Fan Media and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the oil cooler assembly on this 2014 Jeep Cherokee. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is my first time doing this job. I'm going to try to be as meticulous as I can in explaining this. I know that we're going to break this down into three major steps. Removing the air box and air hoses, then removing the intake manifold, and then removing the oil cooler, which is directly underneath the intake manifold. This is a bit of an advanced repair. By the end of it, the intake manifold, which is covering the cylinders, will be completely open. And if exposed to dirt and, I mean, any other kind of object other than oil, um, you can do internal damage to your motor. So if this is not a repair you're comfortable with, you might want to consider getting in a friend who's a little more comfortable doing this kind of work or it, you know, might be a candidate for having it uh, repaired in a shop. But this is, it's easily done. It's just a little bit more of an involved repair. First thing, I'm just going to point out some of the things that we're going to start removing first. Obviously, this air intake hose. We don't need to worry about this, but we will be removing this these hoses and all of these wiring harnesses are going to get unclipped and pushed back and then of course this hose here on the front i'm going to be wanting to disconnect this so that i can push it forward so that it's not in the way of taking down the intake manifold i'm going to be using screwdrivers for the connectors probably screwdrivers for these we're going to need to loosen these uh, hose clamps i know this box has got a bolt on it but we'll get to that when we get there Okay, so I've just got a few of my favorite tools here. A short, very tiny screwdriver, a long, kind of tiny screwdriver, and a pry tool. I'm gonna start with this connector, and um, it'll be a lot easier if you just kind of coax. These are super, super breakable. So it's a lot easier if you just kind of coax the ends up from the bottom instead of prying from the top. ridiculously difficult. So this is the connector. I ended up getting a pick into right in here and pulling and then prying with a screwdriver at the top. So these are hateful little connectors but that should help. Okay this pipe is held on by some little snaps right here so uh, the zip ties come off of this one and then kind of lay it to the side. Now we're going to do this one. I'm going to get this connector out of the way. It's a little bit less likely to break these uh, connectors if you pry from the back where you're not supposed to pry instead of the front where you are. Uh, they come up a little bit easier uh, and you're less likely to break this tab right here. So that's out of the way. Okay, well, this just slides up. Let's see if we can get Okay, let's see. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm just going to set this back down for now. Unless it gets in the way, I think it's fine where it is. So this is off now. We're gonna remove this hose now. It's very stuck on there, so I'm just gonna wanna stick a screwdriver in there in a few areas to help it get unstuck. There we go. We have to get this hose too. It should be a little bit easier because the tabs have little wings, you can just kind of grab them. All of them should be made like that. Does it have two? It does, it has two pins. Okay, so this air box is next. I'm gonna go for this 
pop first. I thought it was a bolt, but it's not. It's plastic. I kind of want to start going after this wiring harness. I'm just going to go after these clips and things one by one because it's in the way of taking off this air box. Okay, so this air box is broken a little bit. It's just what happens with these plastic parts. So this intake has a few hoses left on it. This one, this one, and of course this. I'm gonna leave this on. Um, this all comes off in one piece. But I think I just need to pry on this one a bit. This one's gonna be the same way. Now we're gonna start disassembling the intake manifold. Okay, so these are eight millimeter. They have a Torx head, which means they can fit a Torx screw, but I would not bother with that. They can easily get stripped. Okay, I mean, there's one right here, kind of hiding. So these aren't gonna come out. They're not supposed to. They get caught at the back end. You don't have to try to yank them out or anything. I can see two more bolts right here. There's a bracket in the back here that holds this uh, manifold in place. This wiring harness slips on to the bolt that holds this bracket on. So I'm just gonna get a pry tool in here uh, and pry that off so I can get to the bolt. And then two here in the front. The bolts holding the brackets on in the front are down pretty low. I'm not gonna be able to show them to you and I'm barely gonna be able to get my hands in there, but we're gonna loosen them a bit so that the manifold can come out, but I'm not gonna take them out simply because it'll be harder to put them back in than it will be to maneuver the manifold out. So we're just gonna loosen them. missing screws and bolts in, that go into this manifold. What I'm trying to do is maneuver it backwards so that these screws uh, in these brackets can get clearance to come out. So I'm just gonna lift and push back like that. This is the lower half of the intake manifold. We're gonna have to remove this before we can get to the oil cooler eight bolts on the lower intake manifold. These are a bit longer, so I'm actually gonna get my drill out for that. To help get clearance, and because I don't wanna break these, I'm gonna unplug these spark plug coils. These are super breakable. I'm just gonna pry from the back like I did with the other ones because there's less of a chance of breaking them. We've got plugs down here for the fuel injector, so that's what these are. Um, they have a safety tab. I'm just going to pry that out. Because the engine is open at this point, it's good to be cautious. I don't want a lot of dirt and certainly not any pieces of anything falling into the cylinders. So I'm going to need to do the same thing to this harness that I did to this harness so that I can get some clearance to these bolts. The most dirt and grime is gonna be underneath the lower intake manifold. So I wanna be really careful when I lift up that I lift straight up and I'm not brushing dirt and grime into the cylinders. I've also left the fuel line connected. I just don't really wanna deal with the mess. So when I take this off, I'm not completely removing it from the car. I'm just going to lift it up and lay it over. Okay. As you can see, these cylinders all have seals. The intake manifold that I bought came with new intake manifold seals, so I'll be replacing my seals. 
any mechanic is going to recommend that you replace the seals when you do any kind of job like this. But these look pretty good to me. If I didn't already have new seals, I'd probably clean these up and reuse them if they're not smushed or crushed or deformed in any way. That's just my opinion. We've got some nice big chunky bugs and things that we don't want in cylinders. I'm gonna vacuum up what I can and then clean these down and stuff some socks in them so that we can move on to removing the oil cooler without worrying too much about all this going on here. I have cleaned up this area, vacuumed it, wiped it down. I also cleaned on the upper intake manifold a little bit, swapped out the gaskets. This part is going to get extremely messy and there's really no way to avoid it. So I have cardboard underneath the car, but first we have two connectors that get removed. Um, this one here on the top and this one right below it. There are some E Torx bits screws one two three four there's a fifth one right here and then it'll be able to rise out so i'm gonna grab these two first so these are a torx bolt inverted so this is a t torx this is an e torx and i actually don't have the right size so i'm going to use a one fourth inch this is a six point. I wish I had a 12 point, but I don't have 12 points in that small. I think it's gonna work, but I'm just gonna be really careful to try to not cause any damage. Okay, and that looks totally fine. I'm gonna go with it. Not recommended, but I'm in a pinch here, so definitely not gonna use my drill on this. That would just be irresponsible. There's air like pressurized air also one thing to note i don't really know if it makes a difference or not but because i'm gonna do an oil change on this vehicle anyway i went ahead and drained the oil from it i don't know if that's gonna make this less messy or not just kind of hoping it is oh oh yeah that's the point okay so it's gonna fill up this whole valley here. So I'm gonna see if I can get this off and pinch it. Maybe that'll stop the, uh, the flow. Oh gosh, oh no, that's not good. Not good at all. This is why we put bags down. I'm just gonna try to do this as efficiently as possible. Okay, so I assumed I was going to see this starting to flow because this got opened, but it is not. I think I'm just going to leave it like it is for the moment. So I'm going to use this fluid evacuator. If you have a wet dry vac that you're willing to clean, that can also work. Which way is it going? The correct way. Nice. At the rest of this with paper towels and cleaner these two holes right here that have this is where the coolant comes from you're not going to be able to siphon it's going to continue to stay at the top level because i think it's the path of least resistance so you don't need to clear those holes of coolant so i'm just going to clear all the other areas as best as i can but this is going to take a while Okay, so uh, this is the brand new part. It's not OEM. I didn't know until after the fact that it's really better to go with the Jeep part. This is okay, it, but um, the one that I just pulled out was an aftermarket one. And I think that it was just one of these O-rings, not the part itself. But you can tell if it's an aftermarket part because of these oil plugs, the original OEM part does not have these. 
but it's still a fine part these things fail anyway so i don't know i don't know if it's worth it to save a buck or to go with the g part and have to replace it just later on down the road but this job has been done before so you know that's that's up to the individual these parts generally come with all the gaskets already installed visually verified that every gasket is in um and there's an o-ring here there's the sensors already installed. I read that there was a filter already in the oil filter housing, but I'll need to open it up when I install it and make sure. All of these mating surfaces need to be as clean as possible. I took a plastic razor blade and uh, scraped all of the mating surfaces. Now, it's just about putting it back in. So first thing I'm gonna do is put the coolant hose on just because uh, it's gonna be easier to get to out here than it is when it's stuck down in the housing. And I'm going to do my best to put this on in a way that it'll be easier for the next person since this seems more like a maintenance item than a one-time gig. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Okay, so I'm gonna put it like that. It'll be easier for the next person to get to especially if the next person is me because this part doesn't work for some reason you always have to think ahead so this part might be faulty from the factory but anyway you can make the job easier for yourself it's not a bad idea aye, aye, aye. wow i just pinched my finger what hung up there a little bit is the kind of pipe that goes straight down into the manifold here and the o-ring on it course needs to be a little bit tight and so that just took a little bit of pressure so find the holes okay so I'm going to tighten these in a crisscross pattern to make sure the pressure is evenly distributed as it gets tightened down and I'm not going to tighten them down all the way until all five bolts have been seated first that squeakiness is the um, coolant and brake parts cleaner so we're gonna start with this bolt here so that the pipe O-ring seats as best as it can. And then we're gonna go diagonally across to this one and then go here and here so that it, it seats as evenly as possible. I couldn't find a torque spec on it. Obviously they're small bolts, they don't mean much. So just try to use your mechanic sense and they, ju they just need to be snug just until you feel it bottom out a little bit this is plastic housing too so it just really doesn't need to be that tight so now i'm just going to go around all five give them a little bit of a bump to make sure they're all even now we're going to get our connectors back on just wait to like double check yeah that's on I'm going to take my towels out now, slide my lower intake manifold into here now. There it is. See the coolant level has gone down a bit, but we it really didn't lose much at all. I'm just kind of trying to make sure that these bolts are going into their holes correctly before I really tighten any of them down. If one of them's not in and I have tightened one or a lot of them, it's definitely not going in. It might cause some damage. So now I'm just going to get them all the seat. And again, these are small bolts, plastic manifolds, so they don't really need to be tightened super tight. And this doesn't even hold liquid, so not a big deal at all. And I'm just, I'm going in a crisscross pattern again. So we're going to bring our wiring harnesses back in. I'm going to do these down here first. And you can feel them click. These are called uh, Christmas trees, actually. Push them back down into these holes. Okay. Now 
we've got the upper intake manifold and we're just gonna slide it back in. There are two bolts that are supposed to go here and here that hold this into the brackets. Somebody didn't like that and they completely backed out the stud that was supposed to go in here because honestly I don't blame them because just to do sparks and coils which is a maintenance item it makes this whole job really frustrating so I don't know I don't think that that's such a bad thing could have held on to the bolts though okay so I'm just gonna do what I did with the lower intake manifold just begin to snug up some of these bolts making sure that they're in their holes and I'm not cross threading plastic manifold bolts don't need to be over tightened I'm just gonna start putting some of these hoses back on put in these wiring harnesses so I accidentally depressed this clip in here so now I get to do this all over again except it'll be a little bit easier because there's no hose in there should have done these after I did this. There it is. Don't forget this plug. It's in the back. Kind of forgettable. We're just going to tighten up these hose clamps. stupid pop snap. I'm gonna add in oil that I took out for oil change and I added some coolant. Um, I'm gonna run it with the cap off just in case the system needs to bleed at all. And yeah, so just add your fluids back in. I'm gonna have to raise it up, clean it all on the underneath and then check it for leaks. And that's it. If you found this video helpful, please send us a like and subscribe. And as always, I will be happy to answer as many questions as I can in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again in the shop.